Hello everyone, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, we are going to talk about or discuss about the different types of protesta. So first, we are going to talk about a type or group of protesta which are basically photosynthetic protesta. And among photosynthetic protests, we are going to talk about the group which is known as dinoflagellates or else it's also known as dinoflagellates. So let's look. So let's look into the habits and uh, habitats of this group of organism. So they are mostly marine. So uh, but they can be found in fresh waters also. So mostly marine means uh, salt water and these type of oceans and seas can uh, these organisms can be found here, but they can also be found in fresh waters to some extent. They form the red tide. So this is a very important terminology. Uh, a very good example to explain this terminology red tide is of the Red Sea. So we have heard about the Red Sea. The red color uh, sea is known as Red Sea because of the color of the water which appears to be red. This is because of the presence of red colored dinoflagellates. So this red colored dinoflagellates they give a uh, appearance of reddish water in case of this Red Sea. So hence this is known as the formation of red tide. They show bioluminescence. This is a very important phenomena that is they can give out light. Bioluminescent means the uh, phenomena of giving out light. So these dinoflagellates they can emit light. They store food in the form of two types starch and oil. So the storage material or storage material for food is starch and oils. So here you can see a diagrammatic representation of dinoflagellates. Now let's look into the basic structure of these dinoflagellates. First of all, they're unicellular. So because this uh, group as itself we are talking about is unicellular. So they're unicellular. They can, they are basically motile. They can move and they are biflagellated. What do we mean by biflagellated? They have got two flagella. So different positions, they, this flagella we are talking about can be present in different positions. And but important point is they are biflagellated. Now these uh, uh, cells of the dinoflagellates they are covered with thicca or lorica. So this is basically a very rigid covering uh, on the around the cells. So this is known as thicca or lorica. These cells or these dinoflagellates are also called as also known as armored dinoflagellates. This is why because of the presence of a sculptured plates. So they have got sculptured plates around itself. Hence, it gives a very rigid structure. Hence, they are known as armored dinoflagellates. It basically provides protection. They have got two different flagella. So these two flagella we are talking about can be trans present transverse and can be longitudinal also. They have a nucleus which is quite large and this type of large nucleus is termed as mesocarion, right? So large nucleuses are referred to as mesocarion. Now they have the chromosomes which do not have histones or RNA. So their chromosomes unlike the eukaryotes, the normal eukaryotes uh, like animals like us, we have got histone proteins with it. So but they do not have, in spite of being eukaryotes, they do not have histones or they also do not have RNA. Now let's look into the type of reproduction uh, used or uh, processed by this type of organisms like dinoflagellates. They actually perform asexual mode of reproduction which occurs by simple cell division like simple binary fission which we know about which we have discussed earlier also. So they reproduce by asexually. Typical sexual reproduction may occur in very few cases. Right? So, sexual reproduction happens but in very few cases. Now the life cycle it is uh, actually uh, taking place in this type of dinoflagellate it's typically like zygotic meiosis. So it follows a zygotic meiosis type of life cycle. Now let us talk about some of the economic importance of uh, these uh, groups which are known as dinoflagellates. They are poisonous to some vertebrates. So these organisms like dinoflagellates they actually uh, secrete some toxins or poisons which are very poisonous 
to most of the vertebrates. Now these dinoflagellates, if they are present in large numbers, they produce a toxin. This toxin is known as saxi toxin. This toxin, they uh, release it into the seas, in the sea water. Now the organisms, like marine animals present inside um, those areas, they are, it's very toxic, this uh, toxin like saxitoxin is very toxic to these animals and it actually kills these organisms. There are some shellfishes which actually can consume these type of dinoflagellates. They do not have proper effect uh, in this shellfishes, but if these shellfishes which have actually fed on these dinoflagellates is consumed by us, like if it is consumed by man, it may cause a disorder, it may cause a disease which is known as paralytic shellfish poisoning, it is known as PSP. So this uh, disease which we are talking about can at times be fatal also. So it can cause death for us. So in this video, we have talked about a group of photosynthetic protists which is known as dinoflagellates. We have talked about its structure, we have also talked about the various economic importances of these organisms. So I hope you have understood and like this video. Thank you.